guys, today we are going to talk about the conservation of energy. This is actually um, starting concept two in this unit. Um, I couldn't find a really good video that I liked for you guys to watch on potential and kinetic, but there are some really great ones later on that we're going to cover with all of this. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. It's not too many slides. Um, please take notes and then you will submit those instead of doing a worksheet. Okay. So the law of conservation of energy. We talked about kinetic and potential energy and how there's weight and gravity and all those things acting on us. So the law of conservation of energy is energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So because of this, we have to know all of the different types of energy because there's certain things where you're sitting there going, well, if I like, I don't know, throw something against a wall, where'd the energy go? Because it's not moving anymore and there's no potential energy. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do this, but every single a piece of energy that is currently in the universe today was there billions of years ago when the universe first began. So it's kind of a cool idea to think about if you really want to get into it. <laughs> Excuse me. So we have a few different forms of energy we'll talk about. Radiant energy is light that's going to come from the sun or light bulbs. Anything that you can see, like that you use to see as a power source. So flashlight, lights on your phone, light on your TV, fire, the sun, other stars, um, the reflection of the sun off of the moon, all those sorts of things. And we can also call this solar energy or light energy. And thermal energy is actually the heat that might come off something like that. So while you could have like an LED light bulb plugged in, like my bulbs in here are LEDs, they don't really get hot. That's kind of like the point. So they don't actually give off a lot of thermal energy. There might be a little bit. They're probably giving off a little bit of heat. Where something like the sun gives off heat and thermal energy, or gives off radiant and thermal energy because you can see it and you can feel the heat that it's putting off. Same thing with fire. I mean, fire is just a smaller version of the sun, really. Um, so not everything that gives off radiant light also gives off radiant energy, gives off thermal energy. But most things that give off thermal energy are going to give off radiant energy. Um, this can come in a lot of different forms, but you can even imagine like fireworks when they go up in the air and they go kaboom. They give off a radiant energy because you can see it and also thermal energy because it's an explosion. Then we have electrical energy and this comes from obviously anything that you can plug in um, from outlets, power plants, powering our electrical devices, the thing that is keeping you going on your computer or on your phone or TV, all the things. All the things you can plug in has electrical energy in it. And then sound energy is coming from a variety of sources. So anything that makes sound, if you can hear a sound, it's using sound energy. What? Cool. And then nuclear energy, that actually comes from um, the nucleus of our atoms. So let's say you had like, we have oxygen atoms all around us in the air. And when we can break apart the nucleus in there because everything's so tightly held together, we can actually create energy, and that's how nuclear energy is made, um, and usually used in nuclear power plants is we're splitting those atoms apart and taking the energy that's kind of like held within them and releasing it. And we have electromagnetic energy, and this is something that happens with electrical or magnetic waves, and they can travel through space. So your phone, the way that your phone and Wi-Fi and all those things work is through electromagnetic energy. It's sending out a signal to satellites and then they're, you know, sending it all around and it's coming back. It can travel through space. It doesn't need other things. Like it can, we can technically send signals out to whatever aliens may or may not be listening to us. Um, the same thing with magnetic waves. Um, so sometimes we can send magnetic pulses out and they can travel through space for us to either feel or like kind of sonar later on, you know? Kind of like a bat, that sound, So, but with magnets. So your cell phone, radio, satellite, all those sorts of things are going to be an example of electromagnetic energy. And then these are some um, versions of energy transfer. So if 
we don't make or destroy energy, we just transfer it. What we have over in a firework, we have chemical potential energy. We know that there's the potential for this thing to give off a ton of energy. So the chemical potential energy is sitting in that firework and then we, you know, light it on fire. <laughs> And then it goes into kinetic energy because it lifts up and it moves. And that's because we're releasing the chemical energy. So the chemical energy, potential chemical energy is moving it into kinetic energy, lifting it up, and then it explodes. You get sound energy, you get light energy, radiant energy, excuse me, and also thermal energy. So we're releasing all of that energy and it's still out there. It doesn't really go and disappear. It's just spread out eventually to the point where we don't notice it anymore. So it will change out into other things as it goes. <coughs> then when we come over here to these solar panels, so we're taking the solar energy and we're transforming it into electrical energy, things that we can use to charge our devices, um, to power different things in our everyday life. And this last one, we're plugging in lights we're taking electrical energy and turning it into radiant and or thermal energy. So then this phone charging, so we are putting in electrical energy, we're charging the phone, excuse me. <coughs> and then we are getting out of it sound energy because we can hear all of the notifications from all of our teachers on Google Classroom and all the emails that we're getting. And then we also get radiant energy because it turns on the lights. And then electromagnetic energy is the stuff that we're sending out in signals so that we can get all of those connections. This flower represents photosynthesis. And photosynthesis, if you remember, um, is going to come back from our sun. So we start out as solar energy. <coughs> And that solar energy comes to Earth, and then it is actually transformed into chemical energy that then the plant uses. And then it puts out more chemical energy. And then here we have somebody strumming a guitar. So it's energy in motion because we're strumming the strings, and then we are causing sound energy to come out, so kinetic to sound. And then something else that we need to look at that is actually very, very common for us is mechanical energy. So the mechanical energy is the total amount of kinetic and potential energy in a whole system. So in the entire travel of something that is moving, we can add together our kinetic and our potential at any point, and it should be the same throughout. So we start off over here on the left, we have a low gravitational potential energy because it's pretty much sitting on the ground. Not a whole lot going on. It's as near as the ground as it can get. But we have a high kinetic energy when we hit that ball. I was assuming, I guess it's a baseball. <laughs> and so when we hit it and it gets to its peak, up here at the very top, we have a really high potential energy because now we're so high above the ground that we have the potential to fall. But we actually have low kinetic energy because eventually, the kinetic energy stops and gravity takes over and starts pulling it back down. And then when it pulls it back down, we're back down to a low potential energy because we're closer to the ground, but we have a high kinetic energy because we're moving really fast when we land. So at any point in time, I can look at the numbers of my potential and kinetic energy at one single spot, and they should all add up to equal each other, but when we add them together, we get that mechanical energy. In fact, so no matter what we're doing, the constant law of conservation of energy means that we are keeping this constant throughout the entire travel of the golf ball. All right, so then there's some practice questions. Oops. Um, you are going to be working through some of the practice questions on your own and watching a video tomorrow on the conservation of energy. And then I will hopefully see you guys next week.